Nimzo Indian with A2, A3. What is the same-ish, the same-ish Nimzo Indian? It, it's been refuted and I seem to remember a game that you played that, that just like refuted it. It was like 98 that you played and it was a genius move, Peter. Yeah, well, it's old classics. Uh, you know, I like to get credit for some big innovation, but here I was just following the, the classics. <laughs> yeah, Magnus goes all in because this is uh, this is a typical variation where I takes both of these in order to cause problems, I mean, practical problems. The Magnus had been playing this ASD a lot lately, I mean, in a couple of rapid six, uh, tournaments, and I was really wondering that why nobody is playing this very classical system. And uh, myself, uh, we all had very good results, so I'm very excited to see how Marcos can do this. And F5 and captures, and it captures on C5. Uh, white structure looks awful, uh, uh, Peter, but uh, on the other hand, he's got the, the two bishops and maybe some dynamic play. Yeah, but some other bishops doesn't seem to that much in these positions. I mean, the, the vulnerable pawn structure on the green side is this double pawn C4 and C6 pawn. With all the, all the reasons for black to be happy, in my opinion, and uh, Nicaro is showing confidence. He plays it very, very fast, like we had expected for this match that maybe in an Armageddon situation, Mario will be doing the same speed line, and he was ready for it. Wow, he had, uh, that's, that's world class. Performance and uh, preparation we anticipated uh, in Armageddon. Look at this, Peter. Uh, the C4 pawn has been targeted, and Magnus has said, It's all yours, buddy. I'm going after the knight on M6. Yeah, activating this bishop, yeah, because one of the things uh, Black's whole concept is this that white bishops are dead. Uh, now, finally, at least the bishop on H4 is doing an incredible job. It, uh, Targets to have six knight and also wants to make sure that white gets 93 sooner or later. But if he plays 93 now, then black can jump to the to knight. So Magnus had to exchange the speed. I, I believe he was not happy to do so, but uh, the position is not easy. Absolutely. And again, uh, everybody, there's no increment. So this five minutes versus four minutes is going to go by. Really, really fast. Hold on to your hands as uh, the players. Well, what what am I saying? More or less even on the clock uh, here. Yeah, it's it's absolutely even, and this is very very bad news for Magnus because I mean the position doesn't seem to be really, I mean doesn't seem to be promising at all. Uh, so in this regard, you would like to have compensation with uh, with at least a minute advantage, but. Because this is Gun Magnus is behind on the clock. I mean, all my money is on Hikaru right now, but it can still change, of course. Okay. Well, okay, having said that, uh, do we take on it? Well, <laughs> yes, we do. We take on F6, Peter. Yeah, Magnus finally took with a heavy heart because in a must win situation, thinking for like 30 seconds and capturing on F6 doesn't uh, feel like uh, the choice you want to make. On the other hand, this knight was threatening to jump e4, and then you might regret not have taken this knight. And is this Peshki on c4 hanging? They should take c4 looks possible because any queen d5 check can be met with a queen e6. He did not capture it. Carlos only said, Look, I've got draw odds, I'm going to play with rook e6. Did you now he captures it? Um, an intriguing moment right there. It, it, it passed by too quickly, we won't dwell on it. Your take out of the position up here. Well, I mean, black is pulled up. White has some little hopes along the pre file but uh, let's not forget that also white has issue with, with his king, and some invasion on the first rank would be quite unpleasant, and black is threatening, for example, against rook b7, even maybe to go rook e1, and after queen b5, queen d6 was possible. So, yeah, Magnus just plays a move like e4, this is a very bad sign. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, it certainly is. A4. Now, queen takes a4 would allow queen d5, so you've got to be, you, you, you've got to be uh, careful. And I wanted to say king g7 does encourage rook e7 check, but we've got rook e7 to block check. Intriguing. Queen e7 
87. Okay, this looks really bad suddenly. Uh, it seems to me, Peter, that Black has material advantage, material plus and initiative. Wait a minute. What the heck? We have seven and monkey seven. Strange play. What's happening here? Well, I mean, Black just wants to stabilize, see that, yeah, I'm going up. My queen on f7 is not doing a fantastic job supporting the knight on c4, and while my knight is on c4, your knight on f1 is not getting into game. And uh, the rook on e7 does a perfect job stopping any kind of rook b7 contemplate. The white queen on a6 is kind of stuck. Uh, yeah, hd had to be played, but uh, this is looking very, very bad for is, uh, I was about to say, is Karl planning the invasion on the first wave with something like Rook E1 and Queen E6. But we saw Queen E6 immediately um, looking, uh, eyeing a possibility of Queen E2. Um, well, also just passing the move to White because the problem is White doesn't have any movement. Neither move Rook E8 can be played, White has to go after the E7 board, but it feels like the Viking should not survive any counter-attack. Maybe even something like Queen B5 followed by Rook E2 is an idea. Uh, ah, Queen B5 threatens the Rook on Rook E8. Yes. Uh, okay, but Knight B2 played by Hikaru. Exactly, I was about to say too, you were talking about surviving of the White King. Uh, a perpetual check will do just fine, thank you very much. And any kind of uh, getting rid of this Knight on F1 means that protection around White's king is bare. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, okay, what kind of winning chances are we talking about from the White side and White is done on the clock, no implement there, but, uh, terrible situation to me. This is simply a perfectly plain Armageddon game by the Black side in, the, in, in my view. I just, I hated the opening choice by by Magnus, you, you mentioned that he's played the same-ish before, and he's played it, but you can see now, with almost no time on the clock, this is a very, very easy book upon it game for Black to play. Uh, yeah, this is almost identical to, to the previous game, yeah? When yeah, strangely so, right? Strange yeah. echoes. Yeah, and Black only needs a draw here. So right. basically, it's, it's practically over. Black has 53 seconds on the clock. So time is not an issue. There is no flagging possibility for, for White. So yeah, this is this is basically game over. Exactly. Now you push push him, baby. Just get your get get those pawns going. Oh, now there's one trick in the position, and that's the trick. Uh, rook a4. Oh. Oh, well, okay. Now we can have a beautiful Armageddon uh, game.